It's Pride Month, and today we're talking about one of LGBTQ's most prominent superheroes, Batwoman. Welcome to the Oblivion Bar, a safe haven for all DC comic fans. I'm your host, Kali Hill, and with Pride Month in full swing, we thought it was more than appropriate to talk about Kate Kane in her run, Batwoman Elegy, by Greg Rucka and J.H. Williams III. So, guys, what do you think of this book so far? Uh, I've had a great time with this book so far. I think while the writing is excellent, the art is what takes the cake for me. It's just, it's so well done. There's so many interesting details in the way that the panels are laid out, which granted makes it a little bit difficult to read sometimes, but it more than makes up for it with how well done the art is. I really do love how they did different panels. You know, usually you get those cut squares or rectangles or whatever, and they have different borders on there that have different eloquent designs. And, I mean, the writing is definitely phenomenal. I definitely found myself, like, it was a real page turner for me. Yeah, the art is obviously just so, so good. They definitely take the nine-panel basic, like, structure, and they just punch the shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> But the writing should not be belittled. It is also, I think, very incredible. I think they do a good job of bringing you along with the story without just telling it to you straight up. I think they do a good job of straining you along. Yeah, I totally agree with you with the writing. I just love the story from the jump. I mean, with the action. Of course, uh, Williams brings it to life with his masterful art, but... Rucka just takes you on this adventure and he gives you so much heart. He makes you, he makes me laugh here and there with certain things. But also, I just love watching people get their face beat in by awesome superheroes like Batwoman. But we've talked a lot about the art. What was your favorite panel? I think my favorite just because... It stuck in my head so well, and it fit with the storyline, and my mind was just blown the whole time, was the razor blade in the mouth that still, I'm <laughs> freaking out about it, I'm geeking out about it, I'm just like, oh my god, who has a razor blade in your mouth? Yeah. And so it's just, you can, like, you can count her teeth, you, like, it's so detailed, it's so appreciated. My favorite panel was the one where they incorporated the bat symbol as an actual panel in the book. Yeah. They literally drew a bat symbol and then had something happen inside of it. Like, that's just so cool to me. Like, yeah. if you take stuff and you do off-the-wall art like that, I think that really just brings it to the next level. No, like, that, ex exactly that. I mean, they didn't just give you your typical square art panels. They give you these entire splash pages. And every single splash page was, like, a bomb in your face. It was super cool, super awesome. My favorite display of art or it wasn't just one panel but it was the opening page that where you see elegy on it but you get batwoman in this elegant art you get this nice shading and lighting and you get the you get simple colors black red and white and it just contrasts perfectly and i was like okay i'm not gonna be able to put this down once i start it it is awesome joe speaking of red black and white what did you bring us to drink tonight? Oddly enough, <laughs> it comes in a six-pack cardboard where uh, we got red, black, and white. <laughs> it was kind of, I, honestly, I chose it a little, just a little bit for the funny, but it's actually fitting, 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 fitting. It's fitting very well. It's North Coast Brewing out in California. Um, it's called the Red Seal Ale. It's... Um, I wouldn't necessarily a mix, but it's somewhere in between amber and red. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very malty. Um, you have hops on that back taste. Um, and then also, I, I got to give it to them, they put Carpe Diem Vita Brevis on there, which means um, seize the day, life is short. Which, I mean, that fits so well with what we're talking about here yeah. and that woman. She encompasses that. She lives that. Like, that, that's literally so, like... So she doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there could have been a more perfect fitting beer for this book. Yeah. What do you, what do you guys think of it? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely a fan of the Red Ale. I have only really had Killian's as the only other early Red Ale that I've had. This is very comparable, in my opinion. Uh, it's hard for me to compare the two I find them very similar but 
very delicious beer, in my opinion. I also like this beer. I believe it might be a sea lion on the label, though, and not a seal. It's hard to it's hard to say for sure. It looks kind of like a sea lion. Despite that, you guys should still buy it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Ethan. I, for, I, I'm gonna have to. Same. I'm gonna look this up later. That's gonna mess me up. <laughs> Moving right. on. So, yeah. <laughs> Moving along. Kate's identity as a lesbian is a huge part of her story and who she is. So, how do you think her sexual identity was handled in this book? I think it was handled really well. You know, they definitely talk about it. They don't shy away from it. They are not gonna like soften the blow of yes, like she is lesbian. She is not like heterosexual but i also think they did a good job of making her a gay character but putting character before gay Mm -hmm. i think sometimes comic book writers can think i'm gonna make a gay character and then just make their personality gay yeah and i think that really just belittles what they're trying to do in the first place yeah and i i totally agree with you i think that they don't hold back with the idea that this is part of who she is and it is a significant part of who she is but it's not all that she is and I think that's a strong message that people need to understand about others about anyone like your sexual identity is a part of your life it's not all of your life and if you want it to be all of your life go for it I really like how Rucka represented her I like how how he represented her struggles like, you see this, uh, you see her struggling with her ex-girlfriend at this point. I mean, you saw what sh- baggage she brought into it. You see that relationship, but I didn't feel like it overpowered anything else in the book. Yeah, I think that's really fair. Um, the main thing that I enjoyed about it was, again, kind of to piggyback off what both of you all are saying, is that they definitely delved into the fact that she's lesbian and unforgivably so, like, she's totally okay with who she is as a person, Mm -hmm. which I think, A, fantastic, but also the fact that she is her own separate person apart from that. Like, her sexual identity is very important to her, I think a very big linchpin about why she became Batwoman in the first place. That said, I think she'd be Batwoman even apart from that. You know, just because of her sexual identity doesn't tie her to Batwoman, but Mm -hmm. they tie it together very well, I think. I mean... Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Y'all yes. said it all. I mean, because let's, let's just go ahead and move over to real life. I know comic books are awesome, but they're not real. real life. <laughs> <Sadly. Gosh. laughs> we have people in this world that are homosexual, bisexual, transsexual, whatever. It doesn't matter. You're still human. You're still a person. People will see, you know... The pride parades, and they're like, oh my god, they're gay. Hen and hen. Okay, but they're also a doctor, a lawyer, running for Senate. Batwoman? <laughs> <laughs> Batwoman? <laughs> like, they have to be seen as people. Yeah. And that's the bottom line is that's a person, and she's badass. Bat's ass. Bats ass. Bats ass. <laughs> nice. Nicely, nicely done there. No, uh, I totally agree with you, and I love this. Um, so we actually get to see her with Batman earlier in the book, but she doesn't run her operations with Batman or the rest of the Bat family. Do you think that she ought to run her operations with Batman? I think she does better on her own because... Batman, like, yeah, he knows what he's doing. He's already got some system in place. But that doesn't mean it's the best system. I think that she donning the mask, donning the bat symbol, but doing it her own way Mm -hmm. takes what he's doing and sort of flips it on its head. But still, you know, makes it so that she's still the symbol for for justice. Yeah, and I like the fact that she really... Uh, she adopted the symbol. I feel like she took the symbol on because she understood what it stood for, but she doesn't like live in the shadow of it like a lot of the Bat family members. You know, they, I mean, you have Dick always trying to get out of the shadow of Batman. I mean, they, 
I, I, I don't see that she has that struggle, and I like it. She runs her own operations. She runs them efficiently and effectively. She doesn't have the same moral standing as Batman on everything. She uses guns, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, I think she definitely deserves to don the Bat uniform in her own way. I think there are definitely a lot of important parallels between her and Batman, but they also have their important differences. And I think she has earned the right to be her own solo operation. She doesn't need Batman. If Bat- Batman was an inspiration, for sure. Yeah. But at the same time, she doesn't need Batman to be there to do what she has to do. Yeah, for sure. And Batman trusts her. Yeah. I mean, if y'all picked up on that... I that's, think that's yeah. powerful. I yeah. thought that was super yeah. cool. He's saying... Well, she, she was saying, hey, there's these covens... They're trying to mess stuff up in our city. And he said, this one's yours. I'll watch from afar. If you need something, you hit me up. Not only that, but he was, she corrected him on the amount of covens there were. He thought there were only 12. And she's like, well, actually, there's 13. 13. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to respond to And she's not even intimidated by him, which I love. No, she was so chill. And she's like, look, I'm going to do my thing. You do your thing. We're going to keep this city safe. We're both going to don this symbol. We're both going to get justice. And this world's going to be a better place because of it. I respect that. So I guess here's my question, kind of going off sort of what we've talked about. If she didn't don the bat symbol, if she went by a different name, a different symbol, do you think she'd be still as powerful? A bat woman by any other name? Yes. Sim- mm, at the initial like, thing symbolically, I would say no, just because tying the bat symbol to her makes her powerful in the people's eyes. She would have to, I think, build up the rep of yeah. being Batwoman. Yeah, you gotta think of where she's at. She's in Gotham. It makes sense. It's intelligent. It means something to people. Batman's been wearing the cape and cowl for years, and anybody that wears that bat symbol and does, does it justice is going to strike that same fear into villainy in Gotham. But it doesn't mean that she can't still be as powerful. And that... To me, was what you were asking, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. She can still be just as powerful. It doesn't matter if she wanted to be a fly. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> fly woman. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the name's dumb, but who she is as a person, she's kicking ass, taking names, and she's going to do what she needs to do to keep her city safe. Yeah. All right, so moving on, we see that Kate is obviously haunted by her mother being kidnapped and her being stabbed in the heart. Do you think she's handling her trauma well? So handling it well, no. (laughs) Handling it the Bat Family way, absolutely. (laughs) She is definitely embodying the, I have this trauma, I'm going to push it deep down, I'm going to get the job done, and I'm going to act like it doesn't affect me at all. We all know it does, at least a little bit, and I think that kind of shows through within the comic. Yeah. But, no, I don't think she's dealing with it well. I mean, I really kind of want to quote Harley Quinn on this one. Does trauma exist? Okay. <laughs> okay. That's kind of how she's saying it. She's like, uh, I'm just going to shove that aside. Let's just keep going. Yeah. I, you know, is it a healthy way to deal with trauma? No. <laughs> if I could deal with trauma that way, would I? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I totally agree. I mean, she's, her trauma, again, it's a part of what's happened to her. It's, I think when she handles it well, she's Batwoman out there kicking ass and taking names. And when she's not handling it well, she's still Batwoman, but she's a Batwoman that should take a step back and recollect herself and not go out there pushing herself too far. She does that a lot. She pushes past her limits and it affects her, it affects her mission, it affects other people. And we saw it affect her father. Yeah. I mean, he had to go out in the field and save her. Yeah, exactly. And freaking, like, the monsters from Scooby-Doo had to come up (laughs) and save her too. (laughs) But, uh, guys, that's about all we have for today's show. If you liked what we're reading here and if you want to know more, if you want to get this book yourself, there will be a link to where you can buy it in the description below. Also, if you like what we're doing, make sure you click that thumbs up. And if you want to watch more of what we have to come, make sure you subscribe and click that little bell in the corner so that you can know whenever we upload. 
Question of the week. How does Batwoman rank amongst the rest of the Bat family? Leave your answer in the comments below. And until next time, we'll catch you guys at the Oblivion Bar. A large fresh orange juice, please.